I can't find the words to explain to you how good these pro gamers are. Time He's basis. actually giving his units as he leaves the base. He's trying to get so many other players' face that there's not even time for the Bailey to finish. Now he's got his armies put up. He's got one attack on the right hand side. Another chasing down the army. Storm oh! coming down. These are the best of the best in esports history. And Hux starting to blink forward as the zealots are removed. The supply goes in Hux's favor. So much energy. Where did that energy come from? Tanks desperately trying to target fire down Queens. The Archon's moving forward. A lot is going down here. And only Colossus left over. He's starting to get some feedback now. He's starting to advance forward. Another Vortex. There's the blink forward. Trying to get underneath those Brood Lords. Oh, Holy Ladies and gentlemen, hello from the MLG Studios in New York City, and welcome back to the Winter Season Showdowns, where we have a best of five pretty much every single day in Heart of the Swarm. The beta, of course, to determine who gets those spots at the Winter Championships in Dallas, Texas on March 15th. My name is Akletos, joined by Axlab. We're in the middle of Europe week. How you doing? I'm doing pretty excellent today, yes. good sir. Uh, I was just talking to Mr. Uh, Cody Connors a bit on Skype, and he says Thor Saints pretty okay at Heart of the Swarm. Now, Cody if, Connors, for those who don't know, yes. is is EG's uh, general manager. A Voli, yeah. uh, I think a Voli SE2 might yep. be his Twitter there. And, you know, if he says a player is okay, mm -hmm. that means there's only about a couple people in the world better than them. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, so there's like, there's a status. There's like, you know, amazing is best in the world, okay is top five, and like mediocre is, you know, top one now, percenters, and then everything else. Thorzin is. is his player, so there might be a little bit of Nonsense. bias. No. Today's match is going to be Thor Zane versus Sake. It's going to be the first Terran player in Europe week. Speaking of which, let's do a little recap of the, the past few days and what we got coming up. Of course, uh, starting off the week on Sunday, we saw Sase, 3-0 Snoot. We saw uh, on the Monday, the second day of Europe week, Baby Knight with a 3-1 over Nurcio. And of course, Stefano, 3 0 in Titan very convincingly. Bly with a 3-1 over Mana, a very wonky series we saw yesterday. I think that's the best way I can describe it. But a nice racial, racial distribution thus far, of course. We don't have a Terran just yet, at least from the Europe side of things. Only one is actually in this this lineup of players, and he plays today, and that's Thorzin versus Sake. That's today, and of course, Rhett versus Feast will happen tomorrow. 5 p.m. Eastern every single day if you missed anything. YouTube.com slash official MLGSE2. The VODs are available. Full 1080p HD. That's right, uh, Bly vs. Mana is already up on the YouTube channel, so if you missed that from yesterday, check that out. Of course, uh, coming up t uh, next week, I should, stay, uh, I should say, starting on Monday, it's Creator vs. Nestie, and then MVP vs. Curious. You can see that at the side of your screen there. Again, 5 p.m. Eastern, if you're looking for something to do on a weekday and select Sundays. Twitch.tv slash MLGSE2, MajorLeagueGaming.com. You go on Team Liquid. Bunch of ways you can get there, but awesome Heart of the Swarm action happening to determine who goes to... Uh, Dallas to participate at the Winter Championship event. A lot of amazing players. Uh, I love that you mentioned Curious is coming up on Tuesday because yeah. I was just watching that guy playing in some GSL vlogs and he is just whew, He's good. Amazing. I, amazing. I was a little surprised. I didn't think he'd get out of that group. I don't want to spoil anything though. Uh, I don't care too much, but I, I, I want to be a little bit respectful yes. of the people who hadn't seen that GSL yet, but that was awesome. Definitely check that out. Um, by the way, quick little shout out to you guys because you, I issued a challenge and y'all did it. We got to 5k subscribers. So once again today, during the entire live show, we're going to be showing beta screen, uh, beta, beta keys, I should say, at the bottom of the screen. So keep your eye on that. Of course, we're at 5246, making great progress. Keep it up, guys. Subscribe to youtube.com slash official MLG SE2. Look at all the content that is available. Every single game from the Winter Season Showdown so far. And for the remainder of these uh, of these matches, will be here. Already 30 videos there. Of course, we have some comment of the day, highlights. We got exhibitions, rules of engagement, tutorials, top tens and top fives. Again, your source for awesome StarCraft 2 content on the YouTubes is youtubecom slash officialmlgse 2 That being said, now that all the business is taken care of, the story is set, the setting is there. I think we're ready for Thorzane versus Sake. Of course. Let's talk about these two players a little bit. Thorzane might be, they're both really well known. Sake, I feel like, is one of those guys who's more of a dark horse type guy where you don't necessarily expect him to do great things, but he does. 
I remember one MLG not too long ago, he got knocked out of pool play quite quickly, but then came, made, he charged through the championship loser's bracket and got a decent placement. So he's a, guy, out, he's a guy you can never count out. I think he knocked out five of the world's best Koreans in a row in that tournament. I know DRG was one of them. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple. There were, there were five. There were literally five of the world's best Koreans. Every single race he knocked out. He knocked out, uh, it was MC? Uh, I, I forget which one. It was basically one of the world's best Protosses, world's best Terror DRG, I think. And he's just he's this guy who is capable of beating absolutely anyone. He's got some key strengths, most notably in the late game. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, someone you can never count out uh, in a match versus anybody. Yes. Ever. Yeah. Um, don't underestimate him ever. I, I think that's a great point, of course. On the other side of things, we have the first Terran player from the European side of this tournament, the Winter Season Showdowns. We have Thorzan, of course, from Team Evil Geniuses. His teammate Stefano got his spot in Dallas not too long ago, a couple days ago. And now it's Thorzan's turn to see what he can do. And Terran in Heart of the Storm is so exciting to watch. I've been looking forward to this day. Last week, uh, I asked you which match you were looking forward to the most. You said the Stefano match. I said the Thorzan match. So I'm like really excited for this match, this best of five. PVT. We haven't seen many PVTs in the Winter Season Showdowns thus yet. A lot of ZVPs. I think uh, we had an awesome PVT last week, but this match should be spectacular. And that being said, Nicholas, are I you, think, are I you think ready to, to get into the game? Uh, let's get the game started. Uh, the only PVT we've seen so far in the Winter Showdown series was that very first match, Party vs. Fantasy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Fantasy was just not prepared for, for Party in that series. It was, it was pretty obvious. But this is a series where both these guys match up so well. Yes. Uh, they're both late game specialists, I think you could say. Uh, and, and and that means we're going to see a lot of cool Heart of the Storm stuff if, as the game progresses, of course, more units will, will be out in the field. I feel like of the, Euro of the European roster of guys we've seen, these two could very well be the most practiced in Heart of the Storm. Of course, right now, the blue Terran player in the bottom right, Thorzane from Team Evil Geniuses, he is in Korea. Of course, participating in some Pro League matches. Getting a lot of practice done, working long hours, I'm sure. And by working, I mean playing StarCraft too. That's work for these guys, you know. <laughs> They've got it. They're doing it all day, man. This is what these guys do for a living. Of course, his opponent is in the top left-hand location. He's the red Protoss player, Sake. Now, these guys, like in talking about their practice in Heart of the Swarm, at least compared to Wings of Liberty. Now, the Pro League lineups just came up for the upcoming weekend. Thorzin, I don't think he was in there. You know, I. Uh, you're talking about Pro League, he plays for EGTL mm -hmm. in the Pro League? Yes. And they've got like, you know, eight heavy hitting Korean players. Yep. Right? And so in, in Wings of Liberty, when they've got to pick five or six people, Thorzen often just won't quite make that starting lineup just because there's, you know, just, just players it's, like Hero, it, yeah. you know, Teja, or, uh, Stefano. You're, you're choosing from the best of the best. Exactly. Right? But what that means is that means that what they can do is they can say, you know, Thorzen, Pro League switching over harder to swarm. Uh, you know, why don't you focus on Heart of the Swarm, and then right when that comes out, you're gonna you're gonna be our ace in the hole because these these other pro league teams may not have people. They they probably do actually, but you know, you, yeah, every team wants to have some people who are really good in Heart of the Swarm. So when the pro league switches over, yes. they, they've got that little that's head important. start. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. Like, what players do you say, hey? You know, you're a great player, you're doing great things in Wings of Liberty, but it's time for us to start thinking about the future. I want you to spend eight hours a day practicing nothing but Heart of the Swarm. Thorzen could very well be doing that right now, so I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what he's going to bring out for us, especially as a Terran player. So many new toys in the beginning of the map. That being, in the beginning of the game, I should say. That being said, foregoing that early guess here. He's taken a very fast expansion of the map. It's Aklon Waste, a very uh, decently sized rush distance here. So not too surprising to uh, not too surprising to see him go for this fast expand. Uh, got some high ground at that natural as well. But where does he go from here? Will we see a mech transition? Will we see widow mines? Will we see fire, fire, hell bats? So a lot of questions in my mind right now. Of course, meanwhile the Protoss player Sake taking two gases, Chrono boosting out. Looks like just a stalker. They're going to track down that SCV, and uh, we'll have to see where he goes from here. Getting a zealot, but accumulating a lot of gas. Ooh. I know, right I, know who, giant, I know who likes this play. I love this play, a giant <laughs> blue glowing orb, but that will transform into a Stargate. It is not the uh, Neutron Star or anything of the sort. It will become a Stargate, and when it does, we're going to see Zake put on some serious Stargate harassment, or perhaps maybe even we might see him oh do what gosh. Party was doing, that Void Ray Olin that's so strong against Terran players. 
Thorazin, though, already building an engineering bay. I think very he knows, early. dude. I, I think he knows, honestly. Like, uh, think about it. If you're a Terran player and you're scouting double gas and nothing else in the main base, he didn't scout a third pylon. And note how he went all around the base looking for that third pylon. He knows there's a proxy. It wasn't there. He knows there's a proxy. I think he, he's, he's correctly guessed that it is, in fact, a proxy Stargate. Or he's going to have to start a turret very fast, and there it is in the main. Yes. I mean, he maybe thinks it could be DTs as well, either That's way. That's uh, You would win that turret. And uh, the, the awesome thing about the missile turret is. The Oracle, which is what Zake is going for, kills workers extremely fast, but has very low life. And one thing a lot of people don't know about the Oracle, it only has a range of four. That's a very, very short attack range. So you're talking about trying to work around a missile turret with, with range seven. It's very difficult to get into range to pick off those SCVs while, it, while there's a missile turret right there kind of protecting the entire mineral line. Sake advancing into his opponent's main base, thinking, all right, I'm going to get a bunch of SCV kills with the turret saying, no way, man. Only one kill so far here from Sake. He's going to try to find out what kind of damage he can get done, but Thorzane dealing with this quite nicely so far. He is Odin Reeds. are going to cut it off. Ooh, nice reaction by Sake. They'll pull in an Oracle back just in time. He's making more and more Oracles. And you know, the question is, is if he gets enough oracles, can he overwhelm a missile turret very, very oh, quickly? Or engage a ground army, potentially? Like, if, if two marines are on their own, that's definitely something oracles can take care of. Of course, you have to be very careful with your, um, attribute, with your, uh, you know, how you actually use your, your pulsar beam. It does take quite a bit of energy, so if you use it to kill one marine, that's a lot of energy you're using up, right? So it's not necessarily worth it. So we'll keep an eye on that. Thorazine keeping a lot of Marines at his natural expansion, but it uh, looks like Oracle's taking out an SCV, making that barracks. And oh, the they're going to go for the oh, Sim. No. He's got to pull SCVs to repair this. He cannot afford to lose that Sim. It's it pulls that SCVs. Look at that damage getting really low in health. The SCV is going to start trying to repair that. One Oracle falls, and is this worth it for Sake? I'm not so sure it is. No, I don't think so. Two Oracles going to fall there. Units lost. I'm going to look at that really quick. 600 to 450 in favor of Thorzane. Nice reaction. Able to oh, protect look that at this. stem. A Reaper has found where the Stargate is. That spell is probably the end of that pylon Stargate combination. Zake, though, anticipating this is already starting to transition out. Yeah. Uh, charge is on the way. Armor is on the way. I really like the charge idea. He knows his opponent's going bio. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have to worry about, you know, really early. Hellbats or Widow Mines, which of course are very strong against charge shots. But uh, what he does have a tool is he can use the Time Warp on that Mothership Core as soon as he produces it to mitigate the Kydeen ability that, that Biowisdom has against charge shots. Of course, Thorzane, you know, with Stim finishing very soon, does have a, a certain number of timings available to him. Now, the question is will he wait for Metamax or will he march out? Plus one completes, or are they going to finish at about the same time? The starport just now beginning here, the reactor going down onto the factory. So I feel like a decent timing might be right when a couple medevacs pop out, Thor's in, applying some pressure, taking a third behind it. Will Sake be prepared for it? Charge should be finished by that point. Four gateways about to finish as well, but just now starting that Templar archive. So it might be a small timing here, but Thor's in, even, you know, he can even take advantage of Ignite Afterburners. Might have a hold to, to do some damage. He definitely could. Sake is powering up a ton of warp gates, ready to respond to this type of aggression we're talking about. He's also actually resuming the Oracle production. I don't think this is so much for Harass as he knows there's those missile turrets there. But what's really cool is the Oracle also has an ability called Revelation. Yes. And against a Terran player who with, with the Ignite Afterburners on the Metavax, they can strike at so many areas at once. Keeping tabs on their army is very, very, very useful. And of course, because his robotics is a little bit later than it would be in a, in a more standard opening game, I guess you could say, uh, he doesn't have that the mass observer coverage that a Protoss really wants to have against Terran. Thorazine starting up that plus one armor upgrade. Concussive shells and combat shields about to finish. The first two medibacks are about to pop out, and Thorazine is already proceeding across the map towards his opponent's side um, of Akalon Wastes. Meanwhile, Sake, positioning himself at his natural expansion, has a few zealots, some stalkers, some sentries there. Here's a question. The whole army is sitting there, one zealot sent to chop the rocks. What did that guy do wrong to deserve that punishment? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, Thorzane's pushing out, though. Marines and Marauders crossing the map. Combat shield's done. Attack upgrade's done. Concussive shells is done. Yep. Stimpak is done. Medivacs are out. This is a very scary army right at Sokka's doorstep. All he has is charge and a single armor upgrade. He's got force fields. He's got uh, time warp available from that oracle. So we'll have to see if he can employ that photon overcharge from Mothership Core. I don't think he has a Mothership Core, though. 
I think it, it, it just, I don't oh, see it. Great force fields there from Sake, but is that going to be enough? Thorzay just holding strong here and letting his DPS, his high DPS Marines do the damage. More charge that's coming for Thorzay. Gonna ignite Afterburn out of there with a very low health medevac, but Thorzay might just roll over Sake here. A lot of investment in the Stargate means his his, uh, his ground army is going to be as incredible as it could be. Again, remember, he has a high jump archives. He never really used it. Robotic space about to finish. Never really used that. Warping into six more zealots. Is this going to be enough bio here for Thorzen to close out this game? I think it is a proper coding. More medevac reinforcements coming in for more healing damage. More bio coming in behind it. Oh, nice feedback, though. That's exactly what Zaka needs if he has any hope of holding this. The Mothership Core has 100 energy. Can it get that fo the photon overcharge oh, off? Oh, getting no. targeted down. It's Sake GG right when his Mothership Core falls. So Thorzane, the key part of that was, of course, recognizing the proxy Stargate play, or recognizing something was up, placing the, those turrets and his mineral lines, preventing those oracles from doing any damage whatsoever. Because Sake, he's investing a lot into those early oracles, and if he doesn't get any damage done with that, it's going to put him at a pretty severe disadvantage as the game goes along. Of course, first of all, the Stargate's proxy. So if your opponent finds it, you're not probably not going to have much use of it because your opponent will just go and kill it, and it's very hard to defend if it's across the map. Also, you're delaying tech in other directions. So if you're investing a lot in oracles, they don't end up doing damage, and you even lose them, so they're not going to have a utility as the game goes along because, well, they're not there. You're going to delay progress into the Robotech. You're going to delay progress into the Templar tech, and eventually Thorzane just had a nice timing when his first two medevacs came out, and Sake didn't have an appropriate response. Beautifully played game by Thorzane. I really like that early eBay. I mean, it worked out especially great there, but even if it was DT tech, it would have been fine. If it was some weird late expansion, it would have been fine as well, because he was getting those early upgrades, and if your opponent expands later, you can afford to get an extra turret or two, because of course you have a much stronger con with that fast expansion he did. So, uh, really, really great kind of reactionary adjustments in his build made by Thorzane, and he takes a very comfortable game one. Yeah. Great game there from Thor's, and he's going to go up 1-0 in this best of five. Still has a bit of work to do to get that spot into Dallas. Sake is not one to get up. We'll have to see what happens, of course. Game two coming up. Don't go anywhere.